Hi and welcome to Unit 4, Topic 3, Networks and Graphs. And in this video, we're going to be looking at minimum spanning trees. Okay, so let's talk about spanning trees. So let's start with a graph, shall we? Here is a graph with five vertices. Pretty standard, the tire looks like five on a dice. And we'll just do some connecting up. So it's going to look a bit like this. We'll have a curve in there, shall we? Let's have another curve because we can. Let's do this guy as well. So there's our graph. Now this graph has a few things. In fact, I'm going to add this as well. It has a loop. It has a multiple edges. And it also has cycles. There's a bunch of cycles in here. So this graph's got lots of stuff going on. A tree, remember, is a graph that doesn't have loops, doesn't have multiple edges, and doesn't have cycles. So it's going to be really important. And of course, if it has a multiple choice, a multiple edge, that obviously leads to a cycle. So to not have cycles means it can't have multiple edges. But for it to be a tree, we need to remove those things. So if I label these vertices, A, B, C, D, and E, here are some subsets of this graph that are trees. So here's a simple one. That's a tree. And here's another one. A, B, C, and D. A is connected to D around this way. I've just hooked around the other way. Um, that's another one. So there's heaps of different examples of trees in here, but these trees, they're connected such that there's no cycle, no loop. Now, the important thing you'll note about these trees is that for every vertex, A, to, so if I start with a clean vertex by itself, I've got one vertex, no edges. If I add another vertex, I have to add one edge to make it a tree. So that means I've got two vertices, one edge. And this happens no matter what. I've got four vertices, three edges. And in fact, the general rule will be vertices will equal um, edges plus one, or edges equals vertices minus one, um, which is actually probably a bit more common. So if I've got four vertices in my tree, I have to have three edges. Three edges will connect it right up. Um, of course, I have to be careful. It's not always the case. I could remove this edge and add that one in, and then I've got a disconnected tree with a multiple edge and a cycle, so that doesn't quite work. But this is true. The number of edges for a tree will be one less than the number of vertices. So there's trees and a reminder of what trees are. Now we need to talk about spanning trees. So it's a definition again. A spanning tree is a tree that includes all the vertices. So if I look at this, I've got A, B, C, D, E, five vertices, which means I have to have four edges to make this a spanning tree. So let's just pop this A, B, C, D, E. And I'm just going to use this to connect up. So we'll start with A. A can connect to B. A can connect to C. Um, B connects to E. And E connects to D. That's now a spanning tree. And there's lots of different spanning trees that are included in this one. I could change it around. But by doing this, I've created a single tree. C's the start. D's the end. It connects perfectly. There's no multiple edges. There's no cycles. There's no loops. Everyone's happy. Four edges, five vertices. So that's trees and spanning trees. What we're going to do for the rest of this little subtopic is we're going to look at how to minimize the spanning trees on a weighted graph. Okay, so we have a graph here and it's a weighted graph. I've added the weighted elements to each of the edges. So what I want to do is I want to minimize the spanning tree to find the minimal spanning tree for this weighted graph. And there are, there's one main algorithm that's mentioned in the syllabus. I'm going to show you two in this video series, but I'm going to start by just doing it logically and then I'll show you the two in the next video. So let's have a look at this logically. How do we minimize this spanning tree? So if I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking 10 is my largest weight. 10 is no good. In fact, I can get from D to E using 7 instead of 10. In fact, I'm pretty sure 10 will not be in my minimum spanning tree. It's in some spanning trees, but it's not going to minimize it. Um, this one looks pretty good. I'm probably going to use that one. And that connects A and C. So in fact, let's do this over here. A and C are connected by one. Now, um, I need to connect E, and it's got a seven and a 10, but maybe I'm better connecting with that four. It's a bit smaller, and I can connect B with that three, and that's pretty small. So let's go up here to B. 
and use that as a three. Um, now, I don't want loops. Loops are out anyway. They don't achieve anything, so that's done. And I don't need to go from A to B anymore because that's already on, that would create a cycle. So that's out as well. Um, I need to connect D, and I can connect D with a 4, so that's pretty good. Let's do that. 4, D. Now, oh, that's in, that's in, that's going to create a cycle, so that's no good to anybody. I need to get to E. So I can get to E with a 7 or with a 4. So to be honest, I think I might do it with a 4. That's in, that's too large, that would create a loop, and I've done it. And that is actually the minimum spanning tree, logically. But you can see the problem here. What if I have 100 edges? Then it doesn't work so well. Not that you're going to get a 100 edge question, but the logic breaks down. So we're going to create some algorithms that will help us do it step by step. And we'll do that in the next video. Well, thanks for joining me. In the next video, we'll look at an algorithm, a much more specific way of finding the minimum spanning tree. See you then.